Hello, and this video is going to be on Lane Norton's pH free power hypertrophy trainer, power hypertrophy free for the free big lifts. I'm going to review it because I recently completed it and I want people to know my view on it. So, in total, the program is 13 weeks. Um, oh, there's a bit of echo there. So, in total, the program is 13 weeks. 12 of them are um, the, the meat and potatoes of the program and then one of them is um, where you kind of where you taper and on the very last day of the 13th week you test your one rep maxes again it's five days a week there are a few occasions when it's four days a week and that's when you're uh, testing your one rep max so the way it's structured is Monday you have a squat bench and deadlift day uh, Tuesday is upper body, Wednesday is lower body, Thursday is rest, Friday is upper body with bench press and deadlift, and Saturday is lower body with squat. So each week you're doing the three big lifts twice. The way the workouts are given uh, is through, it, this program's online by the way, I should have said. Uh, so you can, you can, it's free, you can find it off bodybuilding.com and the way it's, um, it's just given for a website. What's cool about this is he gives you a way to test your one rep max and then you test it and then you input the values which you, which you um, performed and that adjusts the, the weight that you'll be using for the squat, bench and deadlift. Um, I think that's really, really handy and really kind of modern. And then add, when you finish a day, when you finish a week, you test your one rep. Well, you, when you finish a week, you, the, the amount of reps you've done with a certain weight that you're given, uh, you input those values again into the program and that adjusts your weight for next week. So if you've done a hell of a lot of reps, I think the, the, the top range is above eight of the prescribed uh, above eight more than the prescribed reps and you um, then it increased it by three percent the weight for next week and likewise if you if you only do like um you only do another three reps it, it increases it slightly less uh if you do the same amount of reps it just keeps it the way it is um so and that's for each exercise again for the squat bench and so you can have like a week where you've done really good on bench press and then next week that will increase kind of substantially while for the for the deadlift maybe you've not done so well so that'll kind of keep it more more gradual progression and um another way which is kind of promoted to for you to track your workouts is using body space it's an app made by bodybuilding.com and um you can download it for free again. It's kind of like a social networky thing for people who work out because you have a profile, like a profile picture, and you can add friends and message them. Uh, I don't know why. Like, hey, bro, you want to go to the gym? Hey, random stranger who's not really my friend, but we just met. Uh, it, it's basically like loads of pictures of topless men flexing and... <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, and also Body Space. Um, they'd send you like regular emails of what you're doing and how you're how you're progressing. So depending on how many exercises you've inputted for that week, it will show it will send you a photo like this one, uh, where you can see what muscle groups you've exercised the most. It will give you like some fun statistics, uh, like oh, this week you've done more sets of triceps than you've ever done before, kind of thing. Although the, the app is also uh, has its limitation, has its un annoyances. So for example, when you're uh, starting a workout, it asks, me, it asks you for the time that you're gonna start, which I didn't really care. It asks you where you're working out. Um, once again, I didn't, didn't give a, it asks you how much your weight is, and then it gives you the option to skip it, but skipping it takes as much of your time as pressing next, so. Uh, and then it asks you, how is your energy level before your workout? Which is, um, for me, it's just average, like, all, most of the time. Like, I guess maybe I've I probably pressed pumped up once and maybe tired, like, a few times. Um, and then it asks you, do you want to show rest timers between sets and exercises? Maybe that's useful. 
but then it's got the functionality to apply to all future workouts and even when you say like no or yes it doesn't apply it to all future workouts it may always makes you input that so i mean it's it's not a big like thing but i guess if i'm nitpicking that will be one of the things but a, a weird thing about the body space is that it will it will tell you like the the exercise you're meant to be doing and how many sets and how many reps but it won't tell you the weight which is also important for this uh particular program so you're gonna have to kind of switch between mobile view the website of the program and then uh your app when you're actually doing when you're actually tracking uh tracking it so that's kind of annoying actually and uh, for me up till then taking my phone wasn't to the gym was, wasn't something i'd do like into the actual like room um but uh i guess when there's so many exercises and it, it does change them up like every um every so often so you, you you'd have to kind of take it if that's something you don't want to do. He also recommends you buy loads of equipment. So I bought a belt, I bought uh, wrist um, wraps, I bought long socks for the deadlift. Um, I, I also, oh, and you also buy like uh, 20Ks for the uh, occlusion training. It isn't a lot of money, really. Um, the belt cost me 30 pound, 20Ks were like five uh, leg 20Ks, which were basically knee wraps. They cost like a fiver again. Uh, wrist wraps, I think I paid a bit more, I think I paid £8 on mine. Um, uh, and the socks, I guess, the socks were kind of expensive, they were like £7, but you can get cheaper ones. What are you actually getting out of this in terms of upper body? Of uh, More exercises, not a lot of sets per exercise, so you do, um, you'd have like two sets of, per exercise. Uh, I guess that's nice in a way that it keeps it fresh, but uh, I, I haven't seen huge hypertrophy in my upper body. I will say I've seen a lot of increase in size of my arms and in my calves. There's a lot of arms and calves work in there. Uh, if, if, if those are maybe your weak parts, you, you definitely change. I've had people come up to me and be like, whoa, man, your arms are fucking huge. And when you're kind of doing the occlusion training, blood flow restriction, which is basically you limit your, uh, the amount of blood flow to you, to your like ligaments and um, what that does is allows you to get the same pump with a lighter weight which means that you're not kind of overstressing your joints which are kind of already taxed from all the heavy lifting you, you'll be doing. So there, there'll be times when I'll be like lifting with uh, two kgs literally and I'll be like oh really like kind of struggling to, to, to squeeze the rep out. Um, but you'll be doing high reps and stuff. So that was really interesting, actually. And yeah, like after every arm day, you have a new set of arms. They look drastically different from the way they did uh, when you started. Although I will say there's a lot of emphasis on the, uh, the two heads of the biceps and not kind of any side or um, other parts of the... Of the arms, so for example, like the little branchialis or whatever it's called, which is like the little um, side bicep, maybe I can call it that. This is what it looks like in a picture. There's none of that, so I changed, I changed the um, the, the normal curls uh, to to actual um, hammer curls, which targets that more. Also, like for the blood flow restriction training, it tells you to use a machine biceps curl. Uh, I've never seen one of those in the gym before, so I've used either ropes or just or just dumbbells. It works. Also, in terms of the triceps, same kind of thing. It really focuses on the lateral head of the triceps with these uh, extensions, and um, there's not a lot of other work. So, because my lateral head was already the predominant head in, in my uh, triceps, I um, I changed all of those ones to overhead presses. With overhead extension, sorry, which focuses more on the long head, uh, and um, also what are they like, L like just f uh, laying down on the bench and doing extensions that way. That I really felt that work really nicely as well because the overheads um, you're kind of doing one arm each time, and then especially after having uh, to do so many sets. There's days when you're doing eight sets, 
per exercise because of the occlusion training. So in order to save time, you add, um, the laying down one was actually more efficient because you're doing both arms at the same time. Um, in terms of also upper body, a little qualm, sometimes I'll be in the gym for an hour and 45 minutes and I don't really want to spend that much time in the gym. I really like the gym, but um, when you're spending that much time, it, it's not only towards the end that you kind of fatigue, but it's it's just a lot of time. I don't think that's necessary to, to really perform gains. Uh, the leg days will be more chill. They'll be like 45 minutes days and the spit and the uh, kind of the, the first day where you're doing squat bench are dead. Uh, those would be really fast as well. So I guess it kind of balanced out in the end, but if you, what I would be doing is I'd be going to the gym first thing in the morning. And if I've got like uh, lectures at 9 a.m., I, I need as much time as I can kind of thing. Uh, it depends how you structure it in your day. Really five times a week. It's, I would, I think I would be doing that maybe even more before in the gym, but um, because you have to now, it's kind of weird, but it changes the dynamic slightly. Uh, and because you're, you're doing these same exercises, uh, it, it takes the fun out of it, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, and you're not doing the same, same exercises. It rotates, so you have one week where you're doing this set of exercises, another week you're doing another set of exercises. So yeah, actually, like, there's, not, um, there's not a lot, a lot of variation. Um, it, does, it does, like, there's a lot more, but... I suppose if it's a program and you want as many people to be able to do it, you kind of want to stick to things which most gyms will have, and most gyms have the equipment that is required for you to use. Um, but there's just so many variations. Here, here is kind of where the program shows what it's about. So... It's, it's neither power and it's neither hypertrophy, it's both. and. When you're doing both, you're, you're splitting your efforts up you're, and you're not going to get super loads of one or super loads of the other. You're just, you're just going to get an alright level of both. And I suppose that's probably okay for most people. If you're someone who's really kind of focused on lifting more weight and getting more stronger, uh, doing like powerlifting, weightlifting, not for you. Uh, if you're someone who's all about making huge gains and looking massive uh, and having big muscles and, and really sculpting your body as well uh, this is also not for you uh, if you if you're in both camps this is for you uh, I didn't I haven't I haven't increased in weight although I look definitely uh, I definitely have a lot more muscle on me uh, I was I was going for a clean bulk actually so uh, I'd be doing intermittent fasting to just try, try and kind of uh, stay clean. I uh, even uh, was cutting carbs out at one point. Um, I'm, I'm happy in terms of the results. What, what about my actual weights that I lifted? So at the start, my squat was 105, bench was like 75, uh, and um, deadlift was 100. And at the end, I have a 125 squat, um, 100 bench and a 150 on the deadlift. Um, I, I even think I could uh, have gotten higher results. It basically uh, kind of went out like the day before and I wasn't feeling too strong. Overall, I'm happy with the those results. Like I said, you're, you're not getting super loads of one or super loads of the other. You're kind of getting a bit of both. So I guess that's my recommendation. Um, it's not for everyone. It depends kind of what you're going for. Um, I do think that strength and and size uh, go hand in hand. So uh, bodybuilding and strength training. So if you're if you if you have an increased level in strength, you'll be able to lift more weight in order to kind of push your muscles to grow more in the bodybuilding side, and vice versa. If you have more muscles, you'll be able to lift more weight. Um, so, so it's up to you to really, to, uh, so I'm not going to say if it's for you, if it isn't for you, it's just up for you to kind of decide what you're going for and if it's the right thing. I'm happy I've done it, I'm happy I've done it, I really am, but um, there's, when I completed it, I really felt I have my life back kind of thing. It did take a lot of my time, even though the workouts weren't kind of, uh, weren't that long, you know, it doesn't take two hours, but my gym isn't that close, and once you shower and like, in the end it, um, 
it, it kind of takes a lot of your willpower and I didn't have that much energy to focus on other things like uh, my studying. So thanks for watching this uh, review. Um, I'm going to make another review on a calisthenics program which I really enjoyed so you'll be finding about that one soon as well. Thanks for watching, see you later.